Let's add an item picking feature to our first person controller. In this episode, we are going to work on picking up objects. The player will be able to pick up objects in a scene, move them around, rotate them, and drop them. Let's see how to achieve this. In order to achieve this, we have to make some changes to the roots player object. In the very first episode, we set the scale of the roots object to 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.5. If we continue to use this scale, later when we try to pick up an object, the object will appear skewed. To eliminate the problem, we have to set the scale of the roots object back to 1, 1, 1, a uniform scale. We can reduce the radius of the capsule collider by half and disable the mesh renderer. With the gizmos enabled, we will still be able to see the outline of the player capsule in the scene view. Let's fire up our player controller script. In the configurations section, I will define a new float variable called item pickup distance. And in the runtime section, I will define a new transform variable called attached object. It has a default value of null. I will also define another float variable called attached distance and it has a default value of zero. Now let's go ahead and define a new tag. In project settings, tags and layers, I'm going to create a new tag called Pickable. We will use this tag to determine whether an object can be picked up by the player. In the scene, I have a cube. This is the target object that I want the player to pick up. I will apply the Pickable tag to this cube object. Let's go back to our player controller script. Down in the update method, we will add a new section for picking objects. I will define a new local variable, raycast hit, called hit, as well as a boolean variable, cast, equals to physics.raycast, hat.position, Hat dot forward out hit item pickup distance. This performs a raycast shooting from the hat position in the forward direction of the hat. The length of the raycast is set to item pickup distance. We use this to determine whether the player is looking at a pickable object. Below this line, we will write if input dot get key down key code dot f if the f key is pressed if attached object does not equal to no that means if an object is currently being picked by the player we're going to drop it so we will first set the parent of the attached object to no if the attached object has a rigid body component, we will set it to non-kinematic. And also if the attached object has a collider component, Then we will enable the collider.
And finally, we will set the attached object to null to remove the reference. This part of the code is for dropping the item. Now let's write a code for picking up an object. So in the else statement, we will first check if the cast is successful and if hit.transform.compare tag pickable, then we will set attached object to hit.transform and we will set the parent of the attached object to the root player object, transform. We will copy the lines for the rigid body and the collider components, and we will inverse the statuses. So that means when a player picks up an object, if the object has a rigid body, it will be set to kinematic, and if the object has a collider attached, the collider will be disabled. Now let's go to the late update method. At the end of the method, we will first check if attached object does not equal to null. That means if the player is currently picking up an object. If it is true, then attached object will have a position of hat.position plus hat.forward times attached distance. Below this line we will also write attached object dot rotate transform dot write times input dot mouse scroll delta dot y and let's multiply this by 30 and we use space dot world. This line allows the object to be rotated forward and backwards using the scroll wheel of the mouse. Transform.right is the right direction of the root player object. Input.mouseScrollDelta.y returns the change in the value of the scroll of the mouse. We specify space.world here to force the rotate method to rotate the object in world coordinates. Now let's save the script and go back to the editor. We have to first specify a value for item pickup distance. I will give it a value of 5. Let's run the game. By pressing the F key, the player will now be able to pick up the object. And by using the mouse scroll wheel, we can rotate the cube. Press F again, and the cube will be dropped. That is how we make the player pick up objects. Thank you so much for supporting the Unity First Person Controller series. Later, I will be publishing more series regarding Unity and other technologies, such as web design and web development. I'm Neil Flicker and I will see you soon. Stay tuned.